Tonight's special guest is Max Cryer. One of New Zealand's entertainment icons, Max has a weekly radio engagement discussing words, phrases and the English language. And the result of all those listener questions is the new book, Curious English Words and Phrases, the truth behind the expressions we use. We welcome Max Cryer as our special guest on The Beat Goes On. Welcome. Welcome to our wordsmith. <laughs> You've been called a wordsmith, haven't you? Though, Max, yes, yes, times. I sort of... But are you a wordsmith or... Well, is I that the wrong, wrong word? No, it's not wrong. It's sort of a, it's a strange word because all I can think of is blacksmith. Or <laughs> someone, someone who makes things. And I don't actually make words. I sort of research yeah. words. But wordsmith will you do. You manipulate words. <laughs> well, I write them down. And that's why you're here today, Max, as our special guest. Curious English words and phrases. Yes. This is yes. a love of yours, isn't it? This it is, is a, indeed. A yes. labour of love. Mm. But of course... Uh, it's a labour, I can tell you, <laughs> as well as being love. <laughs> well, look, we can I just say this? We, I always love having you on the programme because it's always so fascinating. Let's look at what you've done in the last four to five years. Um, who said that first? That was a fascinating book. Yes, that was um, a book about um, phrases that we all know, but we always think someone else said them, and I had to find out who actually invented the line. And I was thrilled to death because I found a very obscure piece of sound of the Queen, the actual Queen, mm -hmm. saying, the buck stops here. <laughs> And she, I mean, she didn't invent the lie, but I thought it was rather nice that she said it. And by the, well, and then of course there's preposterous proverbs. Which preposterous nobody, proverbs. Nobody could ever say. Pro <laughs> proverbs that, that don't make sense, like yeah. the customer is always right. Yeah, Forget it. Watch fair go. And uh, we spent an enjoyable uh, 10, 15 minutes talking about that. Uh, I think it was last year, wasn't it? Yes, Max? it was. Yeah. Yes. And then, of course, Curious Words Now, and right in there, tucked in there, was Love Me Tender, which was a wonderful book, wasn't it? I enjoyed that. It was mm. the, the backstory of 40 famous songs. songs. And although it wasn't actually concerned with words, it was actually a matter of historical research to find mm. out, you know, how did Moon River get written? What was the story behind uh, Somewhere Over the Rainbow? And bit by bit, it came together as a very, a very sort of interesting project. But I want to ask you, your love of the English language, where did that come from? It's hard to know. I mean, when I look back on my earlier career, because I was a singer. You were a singer, singer yes. yeah, When you were, yes, yeah, I yeah. was a singer. But, but I, you specialised in melody, you and your group. Mm. I specialised in words, like mm. Noel Coward, Gilbert and Sullivan, Cole the Porter. Play of words. I could sing, but I was attracted mm. towards things that were crisp and bright. Mm. And um, as the years went by and I sang less and less, I became more and more interested in just the words rather than mm. the music. And I've now been on radio in New Zealand for 16 years. I'm on radio live That's on right, a Saturday. Yes, yeah. And um, they're talking th words. The questions mm. never stop. Mm. I mean, the interest in language just goes on, you know, forever. Mm. So that, the book, Curious, is only a short, it's only a very few of the peculiar things we have in English. I mean, there's 1,200 entries in there. But there's another 1,200 sort of sitting on my desk at home. But what I'm trying to extract from you, Max, it's, uh, it's not just a job. I mean, you've ended up doing this as a living, make, uh, bringing out these yes. wonderful books. But there's also a love of the English language and a love of words, because that's, that's what sustains you, doesn't it? It's not just a job. Yes, it's something you're quite you right. It's not just a job, and it is a love. Um, and I'm one of the very, very lucky people whose work is what I enjoy doing. Mm. I mean, I really enjoy that kind of research. It mm. can be very long and tortuous. Yes. You know, I'm driving to libraries all around the Auckland area. I think there are 50 libraries in Greater Auckland, mm. and each of them has a book that the other ones don't have, <laughs> and you're not allowed to take out. So, you know, the reference yeah. shelf. So I'm forever driving somewhere to find a certain book that's got a certain piece of information that I need. Uh, some of our very bright viewers at home might say, why doesn't Max just Google all this information? Why does he get into his car and drive to 50 different libraries to find out exactly? So give us that explanation again. I know we talked about that the last time. Well, it's, it's difficult to say that without sounding like a terrible snob, but there is a certain danger in relying on electronically presented material. Mm. You don't know who put it there. Uh, very often it doesn't have a date on it. Um, sometimes it's something their grandmother told them, mm. which is the biggest danger of all for a researcher. And I prefer, you know, I have the Encyclopedia Britannica at home and I have the Oxford Dictionary at home, etc., etc. But I prefer to see evidence of something that's had good researchers behind it and has been written down and published and has a date on it. And then I feel secure because I can quote that and say this is where I got this information from. Um, a publisher would raise an eyebrow if you said, I got this information from Google. Mm. They wouldn't be too thrilled. 
that which is written without pain is read without pleasure. <laughs> exactly. Now, so if we look at it, uh, it's from A to B, of course, sorry, A to uh, Z, not A to B, A to Z. Uh, <laughs> but for our viewers to know that all over Bar the Shouting, there's a phrase, at the drop of a hat, uh, a can of worms, um, it's the pits, all those sorts. Uh, we've heard them all our lives. Mm -hmm. We hear them like osmosis. They come to us, don't yeah, they? Yeah, and, yeah. and none of us ever stop to think, where did that... Uh, where well, did that originate? Well, the one you just said is particularly yeah. nasty. It's the pits. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I mean, that's a very common saying. Yeah. And you have the mental image of sort of falling into a hole in the ground, you know, mm. that you can't go in there. But that's into a pit. Yeah. It's not actually what it is. Mm. Are you ready for this? Yes. <laughs> it's a drug addiction line. And really? Yes, yeah. it is. And it originates among people who are so drug addicted and have used needles on their body so, so many times that the only place left that is vulnerable, wait for it, is the armpit. Which would hurt. Which I know, oh. yes. I mean, we better stop talking about it straight away, but <laughs> so well, that is the is truth. That is where it comes from. This is the from. last place you yeah. can stick the needle. <laughs> because so it was tender. Cons consequently, it became, it's the pits. Yes, meaning That's about as low as you can go. Yes. Yeah, you're reduced. <laughs> oh, gosh, the curly <laughs> at. Where did that come from? Well, it's Italian, and it, it's short for amphora. Amphora is a, a, a jar, and it had a certain quantity inside it. Mm. So it was used in ancient Italy as a measure, and there were so many, so many amphoras, and the A was uh, shortened down to a letter A with a curly Italian sort of it. And then as time went by, into English, it became the cost of something. Mm. And if you asked your parents or your grandparents, they would say, oh, yes, you would buy three metres of fabric or three yards of fabric mm. at four dollars a yard and the at meant that was the cost well when email was invented and I think I'm right in saying 1972 uh, don't mm. quote me um, <laughs> the man needed a, a symbol which was on the keyboard but wasn't a letter and wasn't a number so he chose the at mm. and it went instantly into the language it has, hasn't it? but every language calls it something different mm. you see the Germans call it a monkey and in Scandinavia, it's called either a pig's tail or an elephant's trunk. <laughs> <laughs> Hungarians call it the worm, and France calls it the snail. Mm. Only boring English calls it the curly at. Mm -hmm. I think you can just say at nowadays and yeah. people will know, but it's really rather unimaginative. I quite like monkey and elephant's trunk. And oh, one country calls it the herring, you know, the rolled up herring. Mm. Mm. The power of the English word, the power of it. I remember in the picture theatre way back when I was about seven or eight years old, and. Um, we were in the theatre and it was packed. It was a matinee on Saturday morning and someone in the movie, it was a war movie, and they yelled out, bastard. Hmm. Well, the whole theatre was let out and oh, it was an audio, <laughs> the shock of it with these kids. Yeah. And yet today, that word is absolutely yeah. meaningless. And yeah. there's, a, there's another hundred, ten times worse than that. So things do change. Words change. Absolutely. Do you think bastard is still a bad word? <laughs> <laughs> It has lost its impact from that. Uh, but the story behind <laughs> it, the story behind it is rather rude. Oh, okay. What is the story behind it? Well, it comes... Well, we have the, the yeah. official version, don't we? The official you? version is in my book, yes. Mm. Fiel de Basta. It means saddle. And it, it dates from the days when herders and itinerant men on horses dri driving cattle and through Europe would stay overnight in some village and a village maiden might come along with them to visit while they were there, and they would have, shall we say, a very interesting evening using the saddle mm. at, as a resting place. And Ooh. so if she became pregnant, mm. after, long after they'd gone, it was called a child of the saddle. A child of the saddle. Wow. Yes, yes, it's sort of very sad, mm. isn't it? No chance of marriage. Mm. So there was a child of the saddle. And then it stuck, of course, and then it became a derogatory term. Yes, so. yes, very much. Uh, and, then, and also, it can be an affectionate term. You, you old know, bastard. He's a, a good old <laughs> bastard. <Yeah. laughs> Strange that, isn't it? <laughs> now, who's going to enjoy this book, uh, Max? Who is going to love Curious Words? And, and where would they use it and why would they buy it? Let, well, what did, what did you have in mind? Did you have that reader in mind when you wrote it? <laughs> Who will buy it? Who will look at it? I don't know. The interest in language is enormous. Like I told yeah. you, 16 years of questions on radio and they're yes, still coming exactly. in. So p presumably people uh, who are curious to know. Well, it's just chock full of um, words and phrases that we hear, hear every day. In the doghouse. Oh, that's wonderful. <laughs> 1904. That was when Sir James Barry wrote a play mm. about a magical man called Peter Pan. And in a house in London, the Darling family lived, and their children were looked after by a dog called Nana. 
mm. and Nana used to look after the children. Well, one day Mr. Darling was cross with Nana and he chained her up. And that night Peter Pan came and whisked the children away to Neverland. And when Mr. Darling discovered that, that, that it was his fault because he had chained the dog up, he said, I am going to move into her kennel and I'm not going to leave until those children come back. And he did. And that's where the saying, in, in the, the doghouse, dog comes from. It means that you're in disgrace for some reason. Well, I've been there many times. <laughs> <laughs> A lot of people have. <laughs> but 1904, on the London stage, that's so, where it began. <laughs> Out at the airport, uh, Max, every immigrant to the country should be given curious words and phrases. And well, so that would be very That would pleasant. help them, wouldn't yes, it? Yes, as long as they could read it. <laughs> <laughs> and another famous one, one that I wrote down, cat has got your tongue. Are you, the, it's not a very pleasant answer. Isn't it? No, oh, not at all. Gosh. It, it is believed to date back to the ancient days of Oriental kings, Oriental rulers, who had very severe punishments for people who committed a crime. Mm. For instance, if you stole something, your hand was cut off. Mm. But if you were found betraying the king or telling a lie, a major lie, your tongue was cut out Ooh. and given to the cat. <laughs> I did warn you. <laughs> you Tongue was cut out and given to the, the yes. cat has got your tongue. Yes, which meant the person could never speak again. Yeah. Mm. So in English, although not everybody knows the story until they read my book, um, <laughs> we say the cat has got your tongue or has the cat got your tongue, meaning yeah. that you are not speaking. What's the matter? Yeah. But I don't think that the reason for your not speaking is quite the same as it was in the days of ancient China. Mm. What a fascinating book. <laughs> for the cat gets my tongue, we better find out where we can buy this book. <laughs> well, I'm hoping just everything that's got the word bookshop above the door yeah, <laughs> is yeah. where the answer to that. They always say all good bookstores throughout New Zealand. I imagine yeah. that's the same here, all good bookstores. Well, uh, particularly Paper Plus. Yeah. I know that Paper Plus is um, quite interested. One so of your big supporters, if, big fans. Yes, so if you see the word Paper Plus, then you'll mm. find curious English words and phrases. Now, before you go, Max, of course, one of the great things about The Beat Goes On, we always give some of these books away. So you, you, you were a fan of that idea, Max? Well, as long as there's not too many. <laughs> <laughs> what about three? Can we get three? Oh, three away? would be fine. Yeah. <laughs> three. Okay, so Max, we do need a question. I think while we've been talking, Jared, that you've said a couple of times I've been on radio for how many years? 16 years, wasn't it? So if you can email Jared at The Beat Goes On, and in the subject line, just uh, put the, uh, the number 16. 16 years. That will be a good answer, wouldn't it? And then we'll do the draw, and we could have three three lucky viewers will win a copy. And keep it in their loo. <laughs> Max Cryer, wonderful to have you on The Beat Goes On. Thank you, Jeff. See you next year with another great show. <laughs>